Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first module of this MOOC course in health and wellness. What is health? Do you think that health is merely equals to absence of physical illness? In this first module, we will introduce to you the basic definitions of health and wellness. The related studies about quality of life and lead you to reconsider the meaning of health. Besides, there are some short interviews in which we ask both male and female interviewees in different age groups about their subjective perception of their quality of life in Hong Kong. After this module, you are invited to do a questionnaire called WHO QOL Brief Hong Kong Version. Your result will be used for research and kept confidential all the time. You have the right to quit the survey. If you like to know your result, you need to provide your date of birth for checking. OK, let's see what is health and wellness then. Health is strongly connected to our daily life. Have you ever thought about what it really is? It sounds like a very simple term. Previously, the definition for medical model was dominant. In this model, health was the absence of disease, illness, or disability. Recently, most people would agree that good health is something more than merely the absence of disease or disability. As defined by the World Health Organization, Good health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. Thus, health implies an interaction and integration of body, mind, and spirit, a perspective that is reflected in the growth of health promotion programs and alternative medicine. Health is not only concerned about illness, but also about how to spend your life in a positive and desirable way. Also, health is a continuum that composes a two-way dynamic flow between the disease and optimal health. According to Blona, he called optimal health we mentioned above as wellness, a state comes with vigor, vitality, and ability to live life to its fullest. There are six dimensions when testing wellness, including physical, social, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, and environmental. Physical perspective assesses how well the body performs its intended functions. The social one related to one's social connections to others, the emotional focuses on being in touch with feelings, having the ability to express, and being able to control the emotion. Spiritual wellness is the feeling that connects to something beyond oneself. Environmental wellness depends on how one's physical and societal surroundings affects the functioning. It involves both micro-level, like the schools, homes, workplaces, neighborhood, and macro-levels, such as country, globe, and the like. After knowing about the concepts of wellness, let's look into the health conditions of an average Hong Kong citizen. The data was collected in 2018. In this report, most people perceive themselves as excellent or good in general health condition. And that is good news and indicates that Hong Kong residents are confident about their health status. However, on the other hand, the chronic illnesses have become a severe concern to physical wellness of Hong Kong population. Referring to the data, the percentage of persons who have chronic illnesses is nearly one-third, and it is still increasing. Chronic illnesses are great threats to elderly as well. At this moment, approximately 60,000 elderly persons are suffering from dementia, and it is projected that the number of demented persons will significantly increase to 330,000 by the year of 2050. Among those who are age 75 or above, about 22% are suffering from cognitive difficulties. When we talk about life, especially the expectancy, we may think, what is more important to our life, quantity or quality? Do we prefer to live as long as possible at the maximum potential lifespan or be the longest living survivor in your generation? Or do we value the balance between the quantity and quality of our living? 
so that we can have an endured life as well as a reasonable quality of life throughout the course of our lives. In the scope of our overall life, we may think about life satisfaction or subjective well-being. There are three domains that can be considered. First, the contextual domain refers to the surrounding environment, such as school and workplace in the micro level, or the whole society in the macro level. Second, the human needs are related to the survival, health, intimacy, and achievement. And third, health-related quality of life refers to various domains depending on the changes of health. In addition, the quality of life can be evaluated through subjective and objective aspects. As the name suggests, the subjective aspects are referred to our personal attitude and perception towards our social life, our health status or material life conditions, while objective aspects are more related to accessibility of the resources, such as the environment conditions, housing and health services, and the like. The quality of life varies across cultures, age, and genders. Therefore, individual differences exist as everyone has its own definition and expectations to their quality of life. It is indeed a popular but confused concept, which raises heated discussion among diverse philosophies and scientific research. Different to World Health Organization's classification of quality of life, Wienhoven proposed a classification based on two bipartitions between life chances and life results, and between our external and internal qualities. He claimed that the distinction previously do not necessarily correspond. For example, someone may be good in health by the criteria of his doctor, but nevertheless feel bad. With this concern, he took Zapp fourfold classification of welfare concepts as a reference. He developed his own system of quality of life. A more relevant distinction is between opportunities for a good life and the good life itself. This is the difference between potentiality and actuality, termed here as life chances and life results. Opportunities and outcomes are related, but are certainly not the same. Chances can fail to be realized due to stupidity or bad luck. Conversely, people sometimes make much of their life in spite of poor opportunities. A second difference is between external and internal qualities. In the first case, the quality is in the environment. In the latter, it is in the individual. This distinction is also quite commonly made in public health. External pathogens are distinguished from inner afflictions, and researchers try to identify the mechanisms by which the former produces the latter, and the conditions in which this is more and less likely. Yet again, this basic insight is lacking in many social policy discussions. For instance, in the current discourse on city renewal, the phrase quality of life is used both for clean streets and the feelings of being at home in the neighborhood. All the research that found negligible relationships have not changed the use of this word. The combination of these two dichotomies yields a fourfold matrix. The distinction between chances and results is presented vertically. The difference between outer and inner qualities horizontally. And the combination forms four qualities of life. Livability, lifeability, utility of life, and subjective feeling, respectively. In the upper half of the matrix, we can see two variants of potential quality of life with the outer opportunities in one's environment and the inner capacities to exploit these. The environmental chances can be denoted by the term livability, the personal capacities with the word lifeability. This difference is not new. In sociology, the distinction between social capital and psychological capital is sometimes used in this context. In the psychology of stress, the difference is labeled negatively in the terms of burden and bearing power. Livability denotes the meaning of good living conditions. Often, the terms quality of life and well-being are used in this particular meaning, such as welfare or level of living. Livability is more than that. It refers explicitly to a characteristics of the environment and does not have the limited connotation of material conditions. External life chances livability was measured in two ways. One is by the amount of possibilities available in the environment as a whole, and the other is by the relative accessibility for these opportunities. 
The measure of possibilities in an environment refers to the livability in societies like a nation or a city, usable as indicators to developmental policy planning. Aspects such as climate, political and economy, welfare, healthcare, education systems, physical environment, social support system, the neighborhood, community, culture are taken into account for the livability of a society. The right top quadrant denotes inner life chances, that is how well we are equipped to cope with the problems of life. Life ability can be measured in three major aspects. First, health measurements, which directly relates to how well a person is in terms of their physical and mental health. Second, skill measurements, which serve selection within education and at work. And third, capabilities, which are measured with achievements in school or at work. Health measurements can be rated by both experts such as psychologists and doctors or by self-reports. Skill measurements can be measured by performance tests or by self-reports of emotional intelligence. Finally, capabilities can be measured by school success such as years of schooling or level achievements at schools. The lower half of the matrix is about the quality of life with respect to its outcomes. These outcomes can be judged by their value for one's environment and value for oneself. The external worth of a life is denoted by the term utility of life. The inner valuation of it is called subjective feelings of life. These matters are, of course, related. Knowing that one's life is useful will typically add to the appreciation of it. Yet not all useful lives are happy lives, and not every good-for-nothing really cares. This difference has been elaborated in discussions on utilitaristic moral philosophy, which praises happiness as the highest good. Adversaries of that view hold that there is more worthy to our life than just pleasures and pains. Utility of life. The left bottom quadrant represents the notion that a good life must be good for something more than itself. This presumes some higher values. There is no current generic for these external outcomes of life. It is also transcendental conceptions of quality of life. Another appellation is meaning of life, which then denotes true significance instead of a mere subjective sense of meaning. The author prefers the more simple utility of life, admitting that this label may also give rise to misunderstanding. Be aware that this external utility does not require inner awareness. A person's life may be useful from some viewpoint without them knowing. Finally, the bottom right quadrant represents the inner outcomes of life, that is, the quality in the eye of the beholder. This is commonly referred to by terms such as subjective well-being, life satisfaction, and happiness in the limited sense of the word. Life has more of this quality the more and the longer it is enjoyed. With the help of this matrix, we can now place the various notions about the good life. Also, these four qualities of life are connected and interrelated. Life ability, the utility of life, and livability will affect and directly impact on one's subjective feeling. Livability can also affect the utility of life and life abilities. Vehoven believed his classification is a comprehensive measure of quality of life. Indeed, his model is different from other classifications of qualities of life. These qualities cannot be added, hence some scores make little sense. The best available summary indicator is how long and happily a person lives. Are there any gender and age in quality of life? Based on the research, Age and Gender in Quality of Life, conducted by Scott and his colleagues in 2010, we have an opportunity to look into what is important in quality of life among different age groups and gender. They found that older samples took health as a much more significant factor of quality of life than young adults did. Financial condition and happiness were more important among the younger generations. In this table, the results of the study suggested a trend that the older the participants, they emphasize more on the health when discussing the quality of life. In addition, gender differences exist. Women were also generally more aware of health as an aspect of quality of life compared to men until after the age of 75. Further results were obtained using a qualitative method in the study, which suggested three main domains of quality of life health, family, and finance. 
Health indeed plays a relatively significant role when people evaluate their quality of life, especially from the mid-30s onwards. Health is a more important factor for some age groups than others in assessing quality of life. It is a particular priority from the mid-30s onwards, which may reflect a growing awareness of decreasing energy levels, as well as an increasing functional difficulties. It may also, as we will discuss later, indicate that health becomes more salient for people when they have children themselves. While younger participants tend to discuss health in the generic sense outlined above, older participants are more likely to mention specific ailments or declines in cognitive functioning. Older people focus on having their marbles or keeping their mobility. Relational factors are affected among the whole age spectrum, but it is often easily overlooked. To the older generation, when deterioration in the participants' own health becomes more pronounced in older age groups, another interesting finding was the way in which the role of the older person as the carer of a partner in ill health also has a bearing on their assessment of their own quality of life. As for the younger generation, family health is more important. Our next domain, family, continues the theme of the relationship between self and other in understanding lay evaluations of quality of life. When we see the graph about the percentage of respondents who mention family, we see that women tend to put their focus of life on family compared to men. It is possible that females attach more attention and importance to interpersonal relationships. Though we do not wish to overemphasize the difference, as family is clearly important to men too. Interestingly, however, for women in particular, it is the under 46 who are most likely to live in households with two generations who are most likely to mention family. The role of family in quality of life is sometimes linked with family support, such as moral and material support, especially for younger adults. For older adults, the quality of life in parents' children can act as a factor to their own quality of life. Parental roles such as self-abilities to contribute to their own families may also affect one's quality of life. And finally, it is sometimes claimed that consumerism and lifestyle aspirations increasingly govern values and quality of life. The key theme to emerge from our qualitative analysis highlighted the importance of not worrying about money or not struggling. In all age groups, men are more likely than women to mention finance, although the frequency of mentions across this life course is very similar for men and women. Interestingly, however, qualitative analysis shows that men in the 20 to 35 age range discuss finance in relation to quality of life in the sense of being free from debt. From 36 to 54, however, an additional theme emerges, which illustrates, once again, the importance of the relationship between finance and breadwinning identity. How about the situation in Hong Kong? Will the above observations be adaptable in Hong Kong context? Or is there any other creative idea? Please check our interviews among the local residents and how they perceive their quality of life. Previously, we introduced the definition of quality of life and its relationship between age and gender. Have we ever thought about whether quality of life is universal or culturally specific? We would like to take World Health Organization Hong Kong based questionnaire for Hong Kong residents as an example to discuss. Based on the World Health Organization quality of life instrument, Lung and his colleagues in 1997 developed a Hong Kong based questionnaire, WHO Quality of Life Hong Kong. There are four main domains, physical, psychological, social relationships, and environment. In total, 26 subdomains. Most interestingly, in Hong Kong version, the instrument includes two more indigenous questions involving food quality and the feeling of being respected. These two indicates what are specific to Hong Kong people as cultural uniqueness. When we look into the WHO quality of life, we need to know what are the indicators among these four domains. Under the physical domain, the participants are required to answer the questions reflecting their physical capabilities for daily functioning and the somato sensation. It includes seven facets like pain and discomfort, energy and fatigue, sleep and rest, mobility, activities of daily living, 
dependence on medicinal substances and acids, and working capacity. Moving on to the psychological domain, it has two parts, common items and culturally adjusted ones. The former tests the participants' emotional status, cognitive functioning, self-perception, spirituality or religion, or personal belief. The latter evaluates their food quality and their reputation. We call it FACE in Chinese. It is proved to be significant under Hong Kong context. Do you agree or disagree on these two items? Do you have any other creative indicators that represent the quality of life in Hong Kong? Psychological domain focuses on the individual's internal items, while social relationships explore how participants interact among their interpersonal circles, such as personal relationships, social support, and sexual activity. And finally, the environment domain evaluates people's surroundings, how the environment affects their subjective and objective quality of life. For example, the participants would prefer the peaceful and safe neighborhood, rather than a place where crimes and drugs have flooded. It also emphasizes on the accessibility and quality of social welfare, as well as the living environment such as climate and pollution. According to the latest report released in 2014, the mean population of physical health, psychological health, social relationships, and environment domain scores were 15.8, 15, 14.7, and 15 respectively. It is really high among the whole world population. We also find that there is no gender difference for males and females reported almost the same mean scores. However, the age difference exists. Younger people tend to have a better quality of life than their older counterparts. It may be explained as quality of life deterioration with increasing number of diagnosed chronic diseases. This questionnaire is quality of life assessment developed by the World Health Organization Quality of Life Group with 15 international field centers simultaneously in an attempt to develop a quality of life assessment that would be applicable cross-culturally. Please try to fill the WHO quality of life and check your own results and share your observations on age, gender, and cultural differences. Your result will be used for the collection of the database in our course, and it will be possible to be used for research. In conclusion, in this module, we have introduced the basic concepts of health, wellness, and quality of life. We have also discussed the quality of life with age, gender, and culture. In the next module, we will talk about whether health is a personal concern or a social issue. Thank you for listening and see you in the next module. Bye-bye.